With the odds of an accident being one in a million, flying is undoubtedly the safest way to travel. However, in 1977, things went terribly wrong when a jumbo jet was being taxied over the runway in thick fog at Tenerife. Something happened that no one saw coming. Suddenly, from within the mist, the captain spotted an aircraft approaching at high speed. The lights loomed closer and closer, while the passengers helplessly looked out of the windows, hoping that the plane could be cleared from the runway in time. How is it possible for two planes to find themselves on the same runway? Stay tuned! The story begins on March 27, 1977, when two fully loaded planes are waiting for their flight to Las Palmas Airport. The first plane is a Boeing 747 operated by Pan Am Airlines. This flight departs from Los Angeles to Las Palmas with a layover in New York to pick up additional passengers. With 380 passengers on board, the plane is almost fully booked and notably, most of the passengers are elderly, anticipating a well-deserved cruise after landing in Las Palmas. The flight from New York is operated by an experienced crew. In the cockpit, there's 56-year-old Captain Victor Grubbs, assisted by 38-year-old First Officer Robert Bragg and 46-year-old Flight Engineer George Warns. The plane departs from Las Palmas at 7.42 after a 45-minute delay. While the Pan Am Airlines 747 is soaring over the Atlantic Ocean, the other 747 in Amsterdam is getting ready for departure. This flight is operated by KLM, flying from Amsterdam to Las Palmas and back. Interestingly, the same crew will operate both the outbound and return flights, promising a long day ahead for them. The captain of the flight is Jacob Veldhuizen van Zanten, who is 50 years old and works as the chief flight instructor on the Boeing 747 fleet for KLM. This means he spends a lot of his flying hours in the simulator instructing other pilots and perhaps not as much time in the actual aircraft. One of the pilots trained on the type by Captain Jacob Van Zanten is First Officer Klaas Meers, who will be flying with Van Zanten this afternoon. Flight Engineer Willem Schroeder is also on board. At exactly 9 o'clock, the KLM crew takes off from the runway at Schiphol, Amsterdam without any delay. While both planes are flying high above the ground, two men are walking towards a shop near the check-in counter at the destination airport. They stop for a moment and then hurriedly leave the building, leaving behind a bag emitting a ticking sound unbeknownst to everyone. Shortly after, the airport receives an alarming message. Two bombs have been planted and will detonate within 15 minutes. Exactly 15 minutes later, chaos ensues. The explosion injures two people and part of the terminal roof collapses, causing panic. There was a report of two bombs, the airport is shut down and all flights are diverted to other airports to conduct a thorough search for the second bomb. Both planes intended to circle above Las Palmas, but due to uncertainty about the duration of the investigation and cleanup in Las Palmas, they were not granted permission and are redirected to Los Roderos Airport in Tenerife. After an additional travel time of 25 minutes, the KLM flight lands in Tenerife at a quarter past two, followed by the Pan Am flight about half an hour later. Due to the chaos at Las Palmas, Tenerife's airport quickly becomes congested with additional airplanes, leaving little space. Consequently, the two 747s have to wait on the taxiway. Now let's briefly discuss Los Roderos Airport, as it differs slightly from other airports, and I'll explain why. Los Roderos Airport is located next to Spain's highest volcano with an impressive height of 3,718 meters. Because of its geographical location, the airport experiences highly unpredictable weather. When the wind from the Atlantic Ocean collides with the slopes of the volcano, the air rapidly cools, creating clouds and fog. This can result in excellent visibility at one moment while suddenly becoming severely limited at another moment. The dramatic and sudden weather changes at Los Roderos Airport posed a concerning danger to airplanes and crews. This necessitated the construction of a new airport in the southern part of Tenerife, where the weather was much more favorable. However, unfortunately, this airport was not yet ready to be operational. Let's go back to the planes. When the aircraft arrived at Los Roderos, 
KLM kindly asked if it was possible for their passengers to wait in the terminal so they could have a drink and stretch their legs. The request was approved, so shortly after, Pan Am Airlines asked for the same for their passengers. However, since the KLM passengers were already in the terminal, it was decided not to mix them. Instead, the Pan Am passengers were provided with stairs to board the plane and had the unique opportunity to take a look into the cockpit of the giant 747. Overall, there was a good atmosphere on the Pan Am Airlines plane, and they were trying to make the best of the situation. However, in the KLM cockpit, it was a different story. Captain Van Zanten was deeply concerned about the flight time restrictions. He was afraid that the delay would be too long and he wouldn't be allowed to fly back home on time. He was determined to avoid getting stuck in Las Palmas at all costs. Captain Van Zanten had a wife and two children at home. He specifically mentioned that he feared his wife hearing about the bomb in Las Palmas and becoming extremely worried knowing he was down there and staying overnight. Captain Van Zanten wanted to minimize the delay so he could fly back home as quickly as possible. However, when the primary focus is on minimizing delays, it can potentially impact safety. There is a risk of making hasty and irresponsible decisions, endangering not only Van Zanten himself, but also all the passengers. Van Zanten believed the delay would last about an hour, so he decided to fully refuel the plane to minimize the time on the ground in Las Palmas. At that moment, it seemed like a sensible decision. However, just a few minutes after Van Zanten began refueling, Las Palmas Airport reopened. This upset Captain Victor Grubbs of Pan Am because their plane was parked behind KLM's preventing them from passing, and they had to wait until KLM finished refueling. During refueling, all passengers of the KLM flight were brought back on board except for one passenger, Mrs. Robina Monique Van Lanschot. She was the only one pleased with the diversion to Tenerife because her boyfriend lived there, and this unexpected event allowed her to spend more time with him. After half an hour of waiting, Van Zanten completed the checklist for starting up the plane and requested permission to start. Normally, the first officer handles this, not the captain, so the fact that Captain Van Zanten did it himself indicates he was indeed trying to expedite things. Finally, after half an hour of waiting, the engines were started and the planes were ready to taxi to the runway. The only problem was that the weather had deteriorated significantly during that half hour. Thick fog had formed and visibility was no more than 100 meters, making it impossible for the control tower to see the airplanes. Here's a rough layout of Los Roderas Airport, a single runway marked with runway 12 on the west side and runway 30 on the east side. Parallel to the runway is Taxiway Romero, which is connected to four more taxiways indicated as Charlie 1 through 4. At 4.45, the KLM plane was given permission to taxi to runway 30. Upon reaching runway 30, a 180-degree turn was required, and the plane had to wait for departure clearance. During taxiing, the Pan Am plane was also instructed to proceed to runway 30 with specific instructions to taxi to Charlie 3 and then turn left. Due to poor communication with air traffic control, Captain Grubbs couldn't hear whether they said Charlie 1 or Charlie 3. To ensure clarification, he asked for confirmation. However, before air traffic control could respond, Captain Grubbs had already arrived at Charlie 3. This led to confusion since, at Charlie 3, a 140-degree turn to the left is required, followed by a 140-degree turn to the right. This maneuver is practically impossible for a Boeing 747. Captain Grubbs thought that air traffic control might have meant Charlie 4, which would be much more logical since Charlie 4 involves a 35-degree turn, which is much easier to execute. While Pan Am passed Charlie 3, KLM had already completed a 180-degree turn. Once the turn was completed, Captain Jacob Van Zanten moved his throttles forward to stabilize the plane for takeoff. At that moment, his first officer, Mers, interrupted him and said, Wait, we don't do this without permission. Captain Van Zanten reduced the thrust to idle and simply replied, I know, request permission. First Officer Mers hurried to the frequency and said, uh, KLM 8504, we are ready for takeoff. We are waiting for ATC clearance. Air Traffic Control responded with, KLM 8705, you are cleared to the Papa Beacon. Climb to and maintain flight level 90, right turn after takeoff. 
Captain Van Zanten heard the word take off and immediately started the engines. However, in reality, air traffic control had not yet given clearance for departure. Van Zanten responded, Roger, sir, we are cleared to the Papa Beacon flight level 805. We are now at takeoff or uh, taking off. To which air traffic control responded, Okay, stand by for takeoff. I will call you. Due to the poor connection, only the word OK was heard. In the cockpit of Pan Am Airlines, there was growing unease because they feared that Captain Van Zanten had started the engines. Therefore, Captain Grubbs responded, No, uh, we are still on the runway. But this message was not heard by the KLM crew. Air traffic control then said, OK, report when runway clear. To which Pan Am responded, OK, we'll report when we are clear. The KLM flight engineer heard this and became concerned that Pan Am Airlines was still on the runway. And then, in the midst of the dense fog, the Pan Am crew suddenly sees a bright light emerge. Oh God, there it is! Get off, get off, get off! Van Zanten desperately tries to get his plane airborne, but due to the recent refueling, the plane has become 15% heavier, making it take longer to get off the ground. The nose of the plane lifts off the ground, but the rear part remains too heavy to take off. In the midst of thick fog, the KLM plane collides with the Pan Am aircraft, hitting the upper deck of the Pan Am plane with its right engine. The impact causes a massive fire to erupt in both planes. The KLM aircraft continues to slide for several hundred meters before coming to a stop due to the catastrophic collision. No one on board the KLM plane survived the crash. The surviving passengers aboard the Pan Am plane were left in shock. They had to quickly escape the cabin's blaze by making a terrifying six-meter jump onto the hard asphalt. Unfortunately, only 61 out of the 396 people on board managed to survive the devastating crash, with a total of 583 fatalities. At the time of the accident, the air traffic control tower remained unaware of the unfolding tragedy due to the thick fog, which obstructed their view of the planes. It was another aircraft on the taxiway that informed the tower about the fire on the runway. Immediate assistance was dispatched, but due to the misty conditions on the landing area, they approached the aircraft cautiously. Once they arrived at the KLM plane, they noticed another burning object on the runway. Initially, they believed it was just a part of the KLM aircraft, but as they got closer, they realized that another Boeing 747 had caught fire. It was a heart-wrenching and tragic event, that left deep marks in the history of aviation. The memory of that fateful day will forever